Good evening everybody. Now today we are going to start with uh, two topics. One is disaster management and second would be water management that we are going to discuss. Shortly we would be, we would be starting with disaster management first of all and let us see what you have in your syllabus as far as disaster management is concerned. Now the syllabus of MPPCS includes the man-made disasters and also natural hazards rehabilitation, communication network, community planning, resource mapping, all these have been included. Previous syllabus of your examination included some of the case studies. So, we would be also discussing some case studies in between. But on a whole, we start with disaster. First of all, the very concept of disaster that what exactly is disaster and one by one we would be discussing the, all the concepts. So, let us see what are the topics that we have to cover first of all. Now, let us start with the term disaster. In between you have any kind of queries you can easily ask that to me. Clear? Fine. Let us start. Let us start with disaster. Now, first thing that you have to know is what is disaster? Now, what we can see is that in the recent times, the frequency of disasters have enhanced and there are many reasons behind that, that why the frequency of disasters have enhanced. First reason behind that obviously happens to be global warming and climate change, environmental degradation on a large scale, development in high risk areas, so vulnerability enhances due to that also, expansion of population etc. would be considered as the factors which are responsible for enhancement in the frequency of disasters. Clear? But when you are talking about disasters, whenever disaster happens, the first impact is what? That uh, human development would be pushed decades back. Whatever you have earned, whatever you have reaped till date would be pushed decades back. So, that is the first impact of disaster that you have to know. And as such, what is essential? What is imperative here is what? That first of all, you have to manage disaster properly and for efficient management of disaster, what is required is good governance also. So, the prerequisite of effective disaster management is good governance. Without good governance, there cannot be effective disaster management. Now, look at the term first of all disaster. What exactly is disaster? How it varies from other terms like how disaster is different from hazard, how disaster is different from crisis and how we can define disaster. And whenever you write about disaster, the very concept of disaster, you do not have to write the literal meaning of disaster, that disaster comes from two words, Greek words dust plus aster. It comes from two Greek words dust plus aster. Dust means bad and aster means star do not have to write these things in your examination, fine. There are other logical things to write. So, but how to define disaster? Never define disaster on the basis of numbers. See, the Mines Act of India 1965 says what? That if in an occurrence more than 10 people die, it would be termed as a disaster. It cannot be termed as a disaster. Suppose 10 of us commit suicide jointly. It cannot be called as a disaster. So, any definition based on number would be erroneous. Clear? So, any definition based on number would be erroneous. So, proper definition of disaster has been given by whom? Has been given by the Ministry of Home Affairs. And Ministry of Home Affairs says what? That disaster is defined as a catastrophic situation. Trasdi ki stiti hai. The disaster is defined as a cat catastrophic situation in which the normal pattern of life and ecosystem would be disrupted. Not only life, but ecosystem can also be disrupted. So, not only life, ecosystem is also disrupted and emergency interventions would be required to save both life and property. Why? Because life and property happens to be in danger. Clear? So, this is how a proper definition, I repeat. This is how proper definition of disaster can be made that it is a catastrophic situation in which the 
normal pattern of life and ecosystem would be disrupted and emergency interventions would be required to save both life and property. That's how we define disaster. Is that clear? So, a trasti ki sthiti hai jis mein samanya jeevan aur parishthitik tantra baadhit hoga aur akasmik hasta chhep ki avishakta hogi taaki jaan maal ke nuksaan se bacha ja sake. Is tarah se aap likhengi usse. Clear? Maine usse literally hindi mein translate kar diya hai. Now, second definition, let's see second definition of disaster. Now, the second definition of disaster has been given by the UN. And that's also a definition on which you can rely upon and you can write that definition in your examination. So, disaster has been defined as a misfortune in which the security of the community would be disrupted. So, it is nothing but a occurrence, it is a misfortune, durbhagivas sthiti hai, jahaan par aapke sansadhan jo hai, wo baadit hote hai. So, that's the second definition of disaster that we can talk about. When we talk about, when you are talking about hazard, suppose there is a term which is called as hazard. There is a term which is called as disaster. Remember that disaster never takes place in vacuum. It will never take place in vacuum. When if suppose a volcanic eruption takes place at a desolate place, now that would be termed as what? That cannot be termed as a disaster. That would be termed as a hazard. But if suppose population is nearby and the volcanic eruption is going to affect the nearby population, then that kind of hazard would be termed as disaster. So disaster never happens in vacuum. When a hazard affects a sizable population, sizable population can be anything, group, society. So when a hazard affects a sizable population, it is termed as disaster. Is that clear? Fine. So this is how you can define disaster in another way. And remember, on this basis, we can say that disaster happens at what? Disaster happens at the intersection of, suppose, at the intersection of hazard, intersection of hazard, society, and scientific development. Disaster happens at the intersection of hazard, society and scientific development. This is the place where disaster is taking place, occurring. So, this is disaster. Now, understandable in one way that Society is a sizable population, a hazard is influencing society, so it can be termed as disaster. But what about scientific development? Why is scientific development included in that? Scientific development has been included. Why? Because when you talk about disasters, suppose we have made strides in the field of science, we have made advancement in the field of science, yet we are unable to resist, yet we are unable to cope, yet we are unable to recover from the impact of disaster. So, this is one way of defining disaster, the very concept of disaster as such. And the next thing that you have to know here is that as far as disaster is concerned, there is a term which is called as crisis, there is a term which is called as disaster. Now, if you compare these two terms, you can see a slight difference between the two. See, I can say that I am undergoing through a crisis. So, it means that the crisis can be individualistic in nature. We can say that we are undergoing a crisis. So, it means that crisis can be collective in nature. But I cannot say that I am undergoing a disaster. I have been impacted upon a disaster. No, that's wrong English. So, it means what? That disasters are always collective in nature. Crisis can be individualistic. Crisis can be collective, but disasters are always collective in nature. And if at all, if at all, crisis is improperly managed, it would be resulting in disaster. This is how another definition of disaster can be made. Clear? I, I hope that the concept is clear. That uh, how to define disaster? First is the definition given by Ministry of Home Affairs says what? The second I have talked about is the definition given by UN which defines disaster as a misfortune in which the security of the community would be disrupted. 
third I have talked about the disaster never takes place in vacuum if at all hazard affects a sizable population it can be termed as disaster and third thing fourth thing that I have discussed is what is the difference between crisis and disaster Dekhi, crisis ko hindi mein kehte hain vipada aur disaster ko hindi mein kehte hain aapda to vipadaen vyaktigat ho sakti hain samuhik bhi lekin aapdaen har hamesha samuhik hi hongi aur yeh moolbhut antar hai dono ke madde clear now write down please the very concept of disaster write down the frequency of disasters the frequency of disasters have enhanced in the recent past the frequency of disasters have enhanced in the recent past due to factors like due to factors like global warming climate change due to factors like global warming climate change global warming climate change environmental degradation environmental degradation global warming climate change environmental degradation population expansion population expansion development in high risk areas development in high risk areas etc so these are the mean factors which are responsible for enhancement in the frequency of disaster that's one line that you have to write right on whenever disaster happens whenever disaster happens human development is pushed decades back whenever disaster happens human development development is pushed decades back is pushed decades back as such as such not only effective management of disaster is essential as such not only effective management of disaster is essential but one of the prerequisite but one of the prerequisite prerequisite but one of the prerequisite for effective disaster management one of the prerequisite for effective disaster management is good governance is good governance is that clear is the speed proper for you i am not moving at a rapid pace fine respond please is the speed proper for you i am not moving at a very high pace is that so fine now write down next thing disaster is defined as a catastrophic situation disaster is defined as a catastrophic situation catastrophic situation in which catastrophic situation in which the normal pattern of life in which the normal pattern of life an ecosystem normal pattern of life an ecosystem is disrupted normal pattern of life an ecosystem is disrupted and and emergency interventions emergency interventions matlab aakasmik hastakshep emergency interventions are required to save both are required to save both life and property life and 
property. That's how you define disaster because it's not that you are going to only be affected. It may be that disaster may affect the ecosystem. For example, suppose oil spill takes place, the marine ecosystem would be affected. Clear? So in this case, what is happening? The disaster is drastically affecting the ecosystem. So ecosystem is disrupted here. So we are saying both normal pattern of life and ecosystem would be disrupted. Clear? An emergency intervention is required to save both life and property because life and property happens to be in peril. Life and property happens to be in danger. Clear? So that's the first definition. This definition has been given by the Ministry of Home Affairs. Right on. Second, according to UN, according to UN, disaster is defined according to UN, disaster is defined as a misfortune in which disaster is defined as a misfortune in which the security of community would be the security of community would be community would be disrupted the security of community would be disrupted clear so that's how UN is responsible for defining disaster. Is that clear? Fine. Now let's move forward. Next thing that we have discussed that difference between hazard and disaster and on the basis of that we'll define disaster again. Clear? So that the whole concept of disaster is very clear to you because clearly in your syllabus they have mentioned the concept. So first of all let's clear the concept of disaster. Is that clear? Now next thing. Disaster never happens in vacuum disaster never happens in vacuum in vacuum when a hazard when a hazard affects a sizable population when a hazard affects a sizable population sizable population it is termed as a disaster when a hazard affects a sizable population, it is termed as a disaster. Termed as a disaster. Clear? So it means what? It means that it has to affect a group, a society, etc. Fine? And on this basis, you can define disaster also. So, you can define disaster also. It cannot happen in vacuum. So when a hazard affects a sizable population, then only it can be termed as a disaster. So in other words, we will say what? That disaster happens at the intersection of society, hazard and scientific development. Right on. Or in other words, or in other words, disaster happens, or in other words, disaster happens at the intersection of at the intersection of intersection of society hazard and scientific development at the intersection of society hazard and scientific development society hazard and that's the figure that has been given to you for that purpose clear fine so that's hazard and disaster let's move forward and we've discussed one more thing and that is what what is the distinction between a crisis and disaster so crisis can be individualistic or collective in nature but disasters are always collective in nature right on crisis can be crisis can be individualistic crisis can be individualistic individualistic or collective in nature or collective in nature but disasters are always but disasters are always collective in nature disasters are always 
collective in nature clear and how did crisis becomes disaster if suppose crisis is improperly managed then it would be resulting in disaster right on if crisis is improperly managed if crisis is improperly managed improperly managed it results in disaster if crisis is improperly managed it results in disaster clear now when you are talking about disaster management remember one point that disaster management includes four main pillars first of all you have to prevent the disaster to happen so prevention would be the first if suppose some disasters are inevitable they are bound to take place then you should be prepared for that so preparedness would be the second pillar third is mitigation if suppose disaster happened then their impact should be lowered by initiatives taken by you so the third pillar would be mitigation and the fourth pillar would be what the fourth pillar would be relief and rehabilitation so there are four pillars of disaster management there are four components of disaster management right on there are four components of disaster management there are four components of disaster management management first prevention second preparedness preparedness third mitigation and fourth relief prevention preparedness mitigation and relief is that clear fine so this you have to remember all the concept very concept of disaster disaster you have to cover up and then we proceed now see there are terms which you have to be well aware of in disaster management and we are going to discuss now that is called as what that is called as a vulnerability so let's see what is vulnerability see and any area can be prone to disaster any area can be vulnerable to disaster on account of many important consideration maybe that there are unsafe structures in that area because of which it is prone to disaster maybe that there are other considerations for example when you are talking about disaster management maybe there are other consideration for example if there is no coordination between government agencies if the communication network is disrupted and also it may happen also that the forecasting system is lacking the forecasting devices is lacking so an area can be vulnerable for disaster on account of many important considerations many important factors if we examine these factors through a study this study would be called as what this study is called as vulnerability analysis clear this study would be called as vulnerability analysis and associated with vulnerability analysis is the assessment of risk that what risk is involved at different places clear so that's how we are studying the vulnerability of disasters but on the other hand we can see that vulnerability is a term which can be defined also and if we have to define the term vulnerability how can it be defined so vulnerability is never defined as a positive characteristic but vulnerability obviously would be defined as what it would be defined as a negative characteristic it is a negative characteristic and by virtue of which any group institution or suppose society is unable to resist unable to recover unable to refrain from the impact of disasters so that's how it is defined so vulnerability is defined as a characteristic of a group society institution etc by virtue of which it is unable to resist unable to recover or unable to we can see that vulnerability can enhance also vulnerability also 
embity can enhance in the aftermath of disaster, one embity can reduce in the aftermath of disaster. For example, suppose when you are talking about vulnerability reducing in the aftermath of disaster or enhancing what does that mean? Suppose if we talk about the Uttarakhand tragedy, Uttarakhand tragedy is of uh, 2030 cloud bursting heavy rainfall was responsible for flash floods in Uttarakhand where more than 5000 people died. So this tragedy is known to all of us but what we were, we noticed was that the antisocial elements were responsible for chopping the fingers of dead bodies of ladies, dead bodies of ladies, chopping the fingers of dead bodies of ladies. Why? Some issue in the audio? Just wait. Check your end. Is the audio clear? Hello? Respond please. Is the audio clear? Is the audio clear now? Clear? Fine, fine. Okay. Now I move forward. See, when we talked about the Uttarakhand tragedy, what we can see in Uttarakhand tragedy, what happened was that after the flash floods occurred, heavy rainfall occurred and flash flood as a result of that occurred, the antisocial elements were responsible for what? Okay. In between long sentences, two, three words go silent. Okay, I will repeat vulnerability, Shubham. Fine. Okay, now it is clear. Now see, when we are talking about vulnerability, I, I repeat vulnerability again. There are two terms that you have to know. One is called as vulnerability and second is called as vulnerability analysis. I have talked that, I have discussed what? that any area can be vulnerable on account of many important considerations. Any area can be vulnerable on account of many factors. It can be due to unsafe structures. It can be due to lack of coordination between government agencies that the vulnerability enhances. It can be due to improper communication network because whenever disaster happens then the relief measures won't be reaching on time. It can be due to lack of forecasting devices. So if suppose a systematic study of all these factors is made, I am repeating, just I am repeating. If suppose a systematic study of all these factors is made, that study would be called as what? That study is called as vulnerability analysis. Clear? But then the term vulnerability can be defined also. And how to define vulnerability? Vulnerability is nothing but the weakness. Vulnerability is a negative characteristic. So vulnerability is a negative characteristic of a group, a society, institution, through which it is unable to cope up, through which it is unable to adjust, through which it is unable to resist, through which it is unable to refrain, or through which it is unable to recover from the impact of disasters. That is how vulnerability can be defined. Clear? But I have talked about what? That in case of disaster, in the aftermath of disaster, when disaster has already taken place, in the aftermath of disaster, vulnerability can enhance also, vulnerability can reduce also. And when we are talking about enhancement of vulnerability, enhancement of vulnerability can be due to two reasons. One is what? The role played by antisocial elements. Second is what? The role played by vested interest. Let us see how. Let us explain to you how. Suppose I have discussed the Uttarakhand tragedy. So Uttarakhand tragedy what happened was in the year 2013 when flash floods occurred due to heavy rainfall and heavy rainfall was due to cloud bursting in 2000, June 2013 where Kedarnath, Badrinath, Gangotri, Yamnotri were affected and 5000 people died because of that. We can see what? That there were chop by the antisocial elements, there were chopping of fingers of dead bodies of ladies. Why? What kind of 
inhuman act is this this inhuman act was by the antisocial elements for the sole purpose of stealing what the rings now this is nothing but enhancement of vulnerability in the aftermath of disaster clear fine the second thing is that if suppose in the aftermath of disaster when disaster has already taken place you are purchasing a mineral water bottle for rupees 500 it means that vested interest is responsible for enhancing your vulnerability for disaster clear because just to quench your thirst you have to spend more so vulnerability can enhance due to antisocial elements vulnerability can enhance due to vested interest but if suppose a group of youth like you all are present there and you all uh, run a community kitchen and you pledge that that you would be doing so till your resources last that this is nothing but reduction of vulnerability in the aftermath of disaster so community based initiative can be responsible for reducing vulnerability in the aftermath of disaster is that clear now fine right on vulnerability and vulnerability analysis vulnerability and vulnerability analysis and vulnerability analysis an area can be vulnerable for disaster an area can be vulnerable for disaster can be vulnerable for disaster on account of many factors an area can be vulnerable for disaster on account of many factors like unsafe structures unsafe structures lack of coordination between government agencies lack of coordination between government agencies unsafe structures lack of coordination between government agencies improper communication network improper communication network improper communication network communication network lack of forecasting devices lack of forecasting devices etc if a if a study is made if a study is made if a study is made systematically considering all these factors if a study is made systematically considering all these factors considering all these factors it is termed as vulnerability analysis it is termed as vulnerability analysis vulnerability analysis is that clear but see on the other hand we can define the term vulnerability right on on the other hand on the other hand the term vulnerability can be defined the term vulnerability can be defined as a characteristic of the term vulnerability can be defined as a characteristic of characteristic of of a group of a group society group society institution group society institution through which it is unable to cope up 
through which it is unable to cope up unable to cope up with unable to cope up with unable to recover unable to recover or refrain from the impact of disaster unable to recover or refrain from the impact of disaster that's how we are defining the term vulnerability from the impact of disaster is that clear fine so that's how vulnerability can be defined and on the other hand what we can talk what we can see is that vulnerability can enhance or vulnerability can reduce in the aftermath of disaster right on vulnerability can enhance vulnerability can enhance or reduce or reduce in the aftermath of disaster in the aftermath of disaster aftermath means after disaster has taken place in the aftermath of disaster and what you have studied that it can enhance due to role played by anti-social elements and vested interest and it can reduce due to community initiatives right down it can enhance it can enhance due to role played by it can enhance due to role played by anti-social elements anti-social elements or vested interest vested interest and can reduce due to and can reduce due to community based initiatives and can reduce due to community based initiatives community based initiatives is that clear and in that context we have discussed what in that context we have discussed running a community kitchen by a group of youth like you all which would be responsible for reducing the vulnerability of disasters as such so that can be said fine so that's how vulnerability can be defined vulnerability analysis and vulnerability now see what they can do is they can tag with this another question and that is what that if suppose they say uh, they ask you a question like this that what do you understand by vulnerability why is india vulnerable for disaster the two parts of the question first you have to define or give the concept of vulnerability and second what you have to do is why india is vulnerable for disaster now see as far as the vulnerability of india is concerned that why is india vulnerable for disaster india is vulnerable for disaster on account of two broad considerations one would broad consideration would be called as the natural factors and second broad consideration would be called as the anthropogenic or the man-made factors or we can see additional factors clear now as far as the natural factors which is responsible for india's vulnerability is what that 58.6 percent of our landmass that is india's landmass is prone to earthquakes of moderate to high intensity type clear so first thing is that that 58.6 percent of india's land mass is prone to moderate to high intensity type earthquake it means what that there are four seismic zones in india zone 2 3 4 and 5 of which we can see zone 5 is the most vulnerable zone clear zone 5 is the most vulnerable zone which includes yes nitish uh, vulnerability can lead to hazard and then to disaster because suppose if one hazard affects a sizable population it can be called as disaster definitely and in between you can ask your questions i would be ready to answer that now see that's how we can say 58.6 percent of india's land mass is prone to earthquakes of moderate to high intensity type because there are four seismic zones in india two three four and five of which zone five is the most vulnerable zone and zone five includes what it includes jammu and kashmir it includes himachal pradesh it includes uttarakhand it includes also the northern part of bihar it includes the northeast region it also includes what it also includes andaman and nicobar island it includes the bhuj area of gujarat because 
we can see the bhuj area of gujarat lying at the confluence of three plates and we'll discuss all these things when we discuss earthquakes and the mitigation techniques for earthquake management as such but here you have to know that why is the vulnerability and vulnerability is because of the mere reason that 58.6 percent of india's land mass is prone to earthquakes clear moderate to high the second reason is what the second natural factor is that if we see our coastline our coastline is 7516 kilometers long and out of this 5700 kilometers is prone to what it is prone to tropical cyclones so that's also another factor see when you are talking vulnerability analysis akash vulnerability analysis includes all those factors which are responsible for enhancing the vulnerability of a place for disaster but what would be risk involved risk involved means what would be the dimension of the damage that would be considered under the hazard assessment or the risk assessment so there is a slight difference between the two clear now see the second uh, factor which is responsible is that out of 7516 kilometers of india's coastline we can see 5700 kilometers is prone to what it's prone to tropical cyclone and tropical cyclone if we count if we consider the total number of tropical cyclones which hits the planet earth every year six to eight percent of tropical cyclones are impacting upon the indian subcontinent so that's one fact and the tropical cyclones striking india originate from two places one is bay of bengal and second is arabian sea we can see the frequency of bay of bengal cyclone happens to be more the frequency ratio of the frequency when compared to arabian sea is 4 is to 1 and why it is 4 is to 1 also we'll discuss afterwards clear so that's one second fact the third factor that you have to know is <coughs> that as far as floods are concerned 12 percent of india's land mass is prone to floods there are two main regions in india which are affected by floods every year one is the brahmaputra region the river brahmaputra region and second is the river ganga region but nowadays floods are responsible for affecting madhya pradesh also rajasthan also so we will discuss floods in detail when we discuss about the mitigation measures clear individually we will consider some important uh, disasters and discuss them in detail from where the questions can be framed and we will discuss also associated case studies which was mentioned in your previous syllabus we will cover up these also things suppose if anyhow they are asking you a question tagged with that so you will be able to answer that and then the fourth point the natural factor is what that 68 percent of india's land mass 68 percent of india's land mass is prone to not land mass but in fact the cultivable area is prone to droughts and we can see that droughts striking india are of three main types one would be hydrological drought which occurred due to mainly what absence of water sources second would be the meteorological drought which occurs how which occurs due to absence of rainfall and the combined effect of the two would be called as the agricultural drought which has the bearing on crop cultivation so these are what four factors earthquakes floods droughts and tropical cyclones which are natural factors because of which india's vulnerability is there but when we talk about india's vulnerability due to additional factors vulnerability enhances due to additional factors which includes what population expansion industrialization urbanization development in high-risk areas global warming climate change all these factors are responsible for enhancing vulnerability clear so whenever you have to write suppose let's discuss it completely whenever we have to write vulnerability and vulnerability analysis and suppose we also see that another question can be asked from this area we have to discuss also why is india vulnerable for disasters right now india is vulnerable for disasters india is vulnerable for disasters vulnerable for disasters on account of 
India is vulnerable for disaster on account of two broad considerations on account of two broad considerations first the natural factors and second the additional additional or anthropogenic factors additional or anthropogenic factors factors they don't natural factors include natural factors include first additional or anthropogenic factors natural factors include first 58.6% of India's land mass 58.6% of India's land mass is prone to is prone to earthquakes is prone to earthquakes of moderate to high intensity type earthquakes of moderate to high intensity type and why we are writing this line moderate to high intensity type because there are four seismic zones in India 2, 3, 4 and 5 clear so that is the first factor second 12 percent of India's land mass 12 percent of India's land mass land mass is prone to floods is prone to floods 12 percent of India's land mass is prone to floods third 68 percent of India's cultivable area that is not land mass on which agriculture is done 68 percent of India's cultivable area cultivable area is prone to droughts cultivable area is prone to droughts 68 percent of India's cultivable area is prone to droughts and last one fourth out of 7516 kilometers of coastline out of 7516 kilometers of coastline coastline 5700 kilometer is prone to 5700 kilometer is prone to is prone to tropical cyclones is prone to tropical cyclones 5000 so these are natural factors say down additional factors include additional factors include additional factors include factors include population expansion population expansion environmental degradation population expansion environmental degradation development in high risk areas development in high risk areas 
high risk areas, population expansion, environmental degradation, development in high risk areas, industrialization and urbanization, industrialization and urbanization. urbanization and global warming and climate change global warming and climate change i repeat population expansion environmental degradation development in high risk areas industrialization and urbanization global warming and climate change so what are these these are additional factors now Shilpa, in additional factors does not include right or viruses like corona or nuclear bombing can be included. See, when you talk about disasters in India, now there is a classification of disasters in India and <coughs> 31 different kinds of disasters have been identified in India which have been classified into, which have been, I repeat, which have been classified into five different categories. Now, when you are talking about uh, coronavirus, coronavirus would be counted under what? Epidemic outbreak, although it is a pandemic. So, pandemic has not been uh, identified as a disaster in India, but certainly should have been identified because this was the identification is based on what? A high power committee which was established and which submitted its report in 1999 which said that there are 31 different kinds of disasters in India and classified them under 5 different categories. But then if we consider the outbreak of epidemic as a disaster, we can also consider the outbreak of pandemic as nothing but disaster. But how pandemics outbreak takes place? pandemic outbreak like corona outbreak has taken place due to many reasons and one such reason is called as triple recombination of genes in which we can see one factor which has played is nothing but environmental degradation environmental degradation and when it comes to epidemic i'll explain to you that what is triple recombination of genes and how the virus which originated initially from bats because coronavirus originated from where coronavirus originated from bats so the virus which originated from bats how it reached humans so we'll just see when you're talking about uh, surveys when you're talking about epidemic and pandemic there's a difference between the two epidemic is what if suppose the number of affected cases due to a disease the number of cases due to a disease is greater than should have been at that period of the time of the year then the disease is classified as epidemic maan lijiye kisi bhi rog se piriton ki sankhya adhik ho jati hai us samay us waqt jo samanta hona chahiye to use hum kahenge mahamari theek hai so that would be called as epidemic if number of cases due to that disease is greater than should have been normally at that period of the time of the year then the disease would be called as epidemic for example suppose we are talking about uh, kalazar in india was an epidemic dengue is an epidemic chikungunya is an epidemic so these are epidemic but if suppose a disease is responsible for affecting a large population and is transnational in nature it goes from one country to another and we are not very much prepared for that disease then the disease is classified as pandemic clear so there's a difference between epidemic and there's a difference between pandemic so there's a slight difference because epidemics happen to be localized in nature whereas pandemic is responsible for engulfing a large geographical area and would be transnational in nature is that clear first and when we are talking about the question that you have asked that corona or nuclear bombing can be included now corona virus is nothing but a type of pandemic and this type of pandemic and it's not that for for the first time we are having this virus common cold occurs due to corona virus this virus was known to or affecting humans for years for centuries 
But the problem is that this virus never turned fatal for humans. This was never responsible for death in humans. But the problem is that the virus corona has mutated in a way <coughs> that it is responsible for what? It is responsible for causing diseases like SARS that is severe acute respiratory syndrome, MARS that is middle east respiratory syndrome and now which is called as SARS-CoV-2 which is the real name for the disease that is corona because the COVID-19 is a virus but the disease is what? SARS-CoV-2. And this has happened due to environmental degradation, due to loss of habitat of the bats because the bats are getting exhausted and that is why the virus has spilled over from the bats. See disaster management act is applicable for them why? Because disaster management we became a signatory to the Hoego framework in the year 2005. And under that act, what we can say is all these disasters would be covered because the disaster which were not identified earlier under the high power committee recommendation would be considered under the Disaster Management Act of 2005. But more important is what? That under this act, the different types of institution for mitigating the impact of disaster would be also established. Clear? First, now let us move forward. Next term that you have to discuss is called as mainstreaming disaster management. Let us see what is mainstreaming disaster management because on June 3rd, 2016, the Prime Minister was responsible for unveiling the national level plan for disaster management. And uh, when the national level plan for disaster management was unveiled, we can see there were six thematic areas of this plan. This plan was based on the Sendai framework, but there were six thematic area of this plan and the first thematic area was theme included what mainstreaming and integrated approach. So, let us discuss that what is mainstreaming. So, when we talk about mainstreaming in disaster management, mainstreaming in disaster management includes three connotations. Clear? It includes three connotation, three meanings. First is that suppose we are talking about any agency which is this government or private agency. So, when, whenever disaster happens, what happens is the disaster would be occurring, the impact can be other sectors. First of all, what you have to do is the first connotation, the first meaning is that all the projects which have been funded by either the government or the private agencies should be designed in such a way, should be established in such a way that the potential risk of disaster would be less. Clear? It means what? It means that you would be establishing all major projects on disaster resilience methods. Resilience means what? That the ability to withstand. Clear? So, it would be establishing all the projects on disaster resilience method. ठीक है तो इस तरह से प्रोजेक्ट का निर्माण करेंगे ताकि जब भी आपदाएं घटित होती हैं तो उनका दुष्प्रभाव उन पर कम पड़े तो पहले तो यह देखना है दैट्स द फर्स्ट कनोटेशन द सेकंड इज दैट व्हेनेवर डिजास्टर हैपेंस ऑल दीस प्रोजेक्ट्स शुड आल्सो बी डिजाइंड इन सच अ मैनर दैट व्हेनेवर डिजास्टर हैपेंस द इंपैक्ट डज नॉट फॉल ऑन अदर सेक्टर्स उसका जो प्रभाव है वो दूसरे क्षेत्र पर ना पड़े जैसे मान लीजिए कि आपदाएं आई और आपदा आते ही मान लीजिए कि सकल घरित उत्पाद कम हो गया या वृद्धि दर कम हो गया तो ऐसा नहीं है कि आपदाएं आती हैं तो उसका प्रभाव दूसरे क्षेत्र में पड़े तो यह भी सुनिश्चित करना आवश्यक है क्लियर एंड थर्ड इज मान लीजिए आपने आपदाओं पर बेतहासा पैसा खर्च कर दिया यू हैव इन्वेस्टेड अ लॉट ऑन डिजास्टर रिस्क रिडक्शन बट डिजास्टर डू नॉट हैपन लेकिन आपदाएं घटित ही नहीं हो रही तो उस पैसे का क्या उस इन्वेस्टमेंट का क्या तो जब भी आप इस तरह के प्रोजेक्ट्स को बनाते हैं तो ये सुनिश्चित करेंगे कि आपदाओं को निम्न करने वाले जितने भी उपाय हैं उसे आप मानव विकास के साथ जोड़कर देखेंगे एक्सप्लेन सपोज यू हैव इन्वेस्टेड अ लॉट इन डिजास्टर रिस्क रिडक्शन एंड डिजास्टर डू नॉट हैपन सो वट विल हैपन टू योर इन्वेस्टमेंट सो one of the objective of disaster risk reduction measures 
should be human development as well and which kind of human development we are talking about we are talking about sustainable human development in which the environmental degradation is checked and the vulnerability of disasters would be reduced kyunki dekhiye vulnerability badhta kaise hai vulnerability badhegi tabhi jab environmental degradation hota hai to aapdaon ki pravanta badhti hai पर्यावरणीय निम्नीकरण के कारण तो अगर पर्यावरण निम्नीकरण को आप चेक कर लेते हैं तो क्या होगा कि वर्निबिटी रिड्यूस हो जाएगा क्लियर सो दे आर थ्री कनोटेशन ऑफ द टर्म मेन स्ट्रीमिंग आई रिपीट फर्स्ट इज वॉट दैट ऑल द प्रोजेक्ट विच हैव बीन फंडेड बाय द गवर्नमेंट और प्राइवेट एजेंसी शुड बी स्टैब्लिश इन सच अ मैनर I repeat, should be established in such a manner that the frequency of disasters do not enhance, that the potential risk of disasters do not enhance. Clear first thing. Second, all these projects should also be established in such a manner that whenever disaster happens, the impact does not fall on other sectors. And third is, all disaster risk reduction measures should be integrated with. Human development programs also, or one of the objective of disaster risk reduction measures, should be human development as well, so that the vulnerability can be reduced. Is that clear? Right on. Next term, mainstreaming disaster management. Main streaming disaster management. mainstreaming disaster management it includes it includes three connotations teen matlab iske hain teen tarah se matlab ko dekha jata hai iska it includes three connotations first first projects either funded by projects either funded by either funded by government or private agencies projects either funded by government or private agencies either funded by government or private agencies should be designed in such a manner should be designed in such a manner designed in such a manner that the potential risk of disasters do not enhance that the potential risk of disasters do not enhance projects either funded by government or private agencies should be designed in such a manner that the potential risk of disasters do not enhance second these projects should also be established in such a manner these projects should also be established in such a manner such a manner that the impact of disasters that the impact of disasters impact of disaster do not fall on <coughs> do not fall on other spheres that the impact of disasters do not fall on other spheres for example social or economic sphere that the impact of disaster do not fall on other sphere clear for example social and economic sphere and third one of the objectives of disaster risk reduction measures one of the objectives of disaster risk reduction measures disaster risk reduction measures should be human development as well should be human development as well human development as well 
Now this is the very concept of disaster that you have to understand. What is the concept in which we have discussed? I recap the two definitions of disaster, one given by Ministry of Home Affairs, second given by UN. Then the distinction between hazard and disaster, the distinction between crisis and disaster. And then you discussed vulnerability analysis. What is vulnerability? Mainstreaming. Why India is vulnerable for disasters? Clear? Now let's move forward and discuss today. One by one, we'll first of all discuss the classification of disasters in India. How disaster has been classified? Clear? And let's cover up these things first and then individual will pick up disasters one by one and discuss in detail the mitigation measures. Fine. So let's cover up this first of all. See. Then separately they can ask you questions on suppose earthquake management, flood management and uh, we'll discuss these things with examples. Fine. So separately it can be asked in your examination. So we'll be prepared for that. See when you are talking about um, uh, examples of these three points, first point I said what? That all, the best example is what? That Prime Minister in the year 2016 was not only responsible for unveiling the national level plan for disaster management but was also responsible for giving his 10 point agenda for disaster risk reduction. And the first point is what? That all major airports or all major projects should be established in such a manner that the impact of disaster would be lowered. It means what? That all those measures should be taken. For example, suppose we are talking about earthquake resistant buildings in these areas. So the project should be established, the building should be established which can succumb, suppose if earthquakes occur, then it can withstand. For example, base isolation technique can be used in these buildings for resilience. For example, vibration dampers can be used. So these are the examples that we have talked about, that how resilience can be developed. Resilience is not only developed by techniques of establishment of structures. Resilience for disaster can also be developed if suppose disasters are forecasted on time so that evacuation can be made clear. So when we are talking about that what kind of structures, the structures depend upon first of all suppose there is an airport or suppose there is an industrial complex where a chemical disaster can occur. First of all you have to ensure that that the roads near that industrial complex is proper so that evacuation can be made. No urban sprawl should be present, no dense population should be present in that area. Clear? So these are the measures that we are talking about that how disaster resilience method can be utilized for establishment of projects. Is that clear? Fine. And then we are talking about sustainable development. See the Hoego framework for disaster risk reduction of 2005 itself says what? That we should integrate disaster risk reduction measures with sustainable development programs of the government. And sustainable development programs include what? It includes green development, it includes social development, it includes economic development and green development means that we would be checking environmental degradation. For example, suppose we are establishing carbon reduction project which is based on non-conventional forms of energy. This is nothing but a type of project which would be ushering in sustainable development. Clear? So these are the examples that you have to know. Now let's talk about and see there when we talk about the classification of disasters in India, there are some disasters which have not been identified in India. For example, um, when you talk about terror attacks, Terror attacks are not disaster, but serial bomb blast has been identified as a disaster. Clear? Agro-terrorism is not a disaster in India. And the attack made by suppose biological weapon or chemical weapon is not a disaster considered as a disaster in India, but should have been considered, but should have been considered as disasters also. So we will discuss also that what are the uh, drawbacks of the list at the end.
and whenever you have to write questions on disaster management make it sure that technical points should be included in that and we will cover up how the technical points can be included. Now when we talk about disaster a classification of disasters in India a high power committee was established and in the year 1999 it identified 31 different kinds of disasters in India and these 31 kind of disasters were classified under 5 different categories. Fine. The first category is what? The first category is called as water and climate related disasters. So, water and climate related disasters which includes obviously floods, droughts, tsunami, tropical cyclone, cloud bursting, then thunder and lightning etc. would be falling under that category, heat wave, then cold wave etc. would be falling under that category. So, that is the first category. The second category is what? The second category is geologically related disasters. Geologically related disaster include three main disaster. One is earthquake, second is what? Second is landslide and third is dam bursting. So, dam bursting takes place in India also. For example, in the year 2012, there was a dam called Saloni Dam in uh, Allahabad that bursted and because of that, their lower lying areas of Allahabad was inundated. So, that is the best example that I can cite of near uh, future and we can, uh, near history. And then the third thing that you have to remember is the third disaster is landslides. So, there are three disasters in this category earthquakes, landslides and ambusting geological related disaster. The third category of disaster is what? Industrial disaster which includes nuclear disaster which includes chemical disaster and some uh, will discuss the, some of the case studies for example in the last syllabus uh, last year's syllabus you had uh, Fukushima nuclear disaster also Chernobyl nuclear disaster so we will discuss all these disasters with case studies then Bhopal gas tragedy also needs to be covered up because you are from Madhya Pradesh obviously this should be covered up also that why Bhopal gas tragedy took place what was the impact so just one one paragraph on all these important disasters the case studies and also the mitigation measures that what can be done and that should be discussed in detail one by one. Then the fourth category of disaster is what? It includes accident related disasters. So, rail accident, road accident, but they won't be asking questions on rail or road accident unless and until a major accident takes place, then only it can be asked. But air accident has taken place recently and you know where it has taken place and what was the reason also because the, the air pad was very narrow. So, that can be asked as one of the uh, questions can be framed on that also and then stampede is a disaster that you have to know. Boat capsizing is a disaster, oil spill is a disaster. So, all these are the accident related disaster which includes building collapse also, which includes also electrical disaster, which includes festival related disasters, boat capsizing, then also serial bomb blasts. I told you that terrorist attack has not been identified by by the high power committee as a disaster, but serial bomb blast. If at all the terrorist attack is in the in the form of serial bomb blast, then it can be called as disaster. And then the fifth category is obviously what is called as the biologically related disaster, which includes epidemic, which includes cattle epidemic also, which includes also that um, food poisoning, for example, midday meal school. Um, meal in school for school children you can see cases of food poisoning taking place there. So, all these are different kinds of disaster which have been identified. So, let us see how this can be classified and put it to in the form of table. Fine. So, it was definitely uh, service it was a table top runway and you have some airports in India not only the Kerala airport was there, but also you have an airport in Patna where disaster occurred because of very restricted area to land clear let us cover up all these things one by one fine right on classification of disasters in India classification of disasters in India. A high power committee constituted by the government, a high power committee constituted by the government, constituted by the government identified, 
identified 31 different types of disasters in India. 31 different types of disasters in India. Disasters in India. And place them and place them in five different categories and place them in five different categories. First, five different categories. First, water and climate related disasters, water and climate related disasters. water and climate related disasters which includes floods drought tropical cyclones flood drought tropical cyclone tsunami floods droughts tropical cyclone tsunami heat wave cold wave thunder and lightning thunder and lightning floods droughts tropical cyclone tsunami heat wave cold wave thunder and lightning cloud bursting cloud bursting avalanches avalanches so all these fall under the first category clear so water and climate related disasters flood dots tropical cyclone tsunami heat wave cold wave thunder lightning cloud bursting avalanches all these and even though we can see dust storm has been classified as disaster in India. So, all these are under the first category. Right on the second category. Second category. Geologically. Geologically related disasters. geologically related disasters which includes earthquakes which includes earthquakes landslides earthquakes landslides and dam busting and dam busting earthquakes landslide and dam busting so that's the second category third category third category industrial disasters industrial disasters which includes industrial disasters which includes which includes chemical disaster chemical disaster nuclear disaster chemical disaster nuclear disaster mine disaster chemical disaster nuclear disaster mines disaster see when you talk about avalanches and landslide rapid movement of snow would be called as what it is termed as avalanches clear see the problem is what the problem is that we construct such airports because why for the convenience of the people we have constructed knowing that that this is vulnerable for disasters 
we know that but there are political reasons also that my constituency should have an airport so that's the reason why we are constructing and we know that the vulnerability is very high for disasters see when we we discussed the definition of disaster what we discussed we discussed that Uh, Sushank, when we discuss the definition of disaster, we discuss that that disaster is defined as a catastrophic situation in which the normal pattern of life and ecosystem would be disrupted. In this case, the coastal ecosystem is disrupted due to oil, oil spill. That's why we are classifying it as disaster. Clear. Industrial disaster, which includes chemical disaster, nuclear disaster, and mines disaster. Then the fourth category is what? Write down. accident related disasters fourth category is accident related disasters accident related disasters which includes air accident road accident obviously they are not going to ask you question on road accident road accident rail accident see rail accident if at all a big rail accident takes place then only it can be framed as a question otherwise not but remember that the rails today the concern of railways is today one big concern is what unmanned crossing is the main concern otherwise all the major trains have what is called as anti collision device installed on them so that they cannot collide with each other so one concern is the unmanned crossing whenever in interview etc they ask you that what is the main concern of the railways the main concern of the railways is unmanned crossing where tragedies occur then also boat capsizing now jo hai hote hain wo doob jate hain और नावों का जलमग्न होना भारत में क्यों होता है क्योंकि हम लोग नावों को ओवरलोड कर देते हैं चाहे वो कहीं हो दक्षिण भारत में हो या उत्तरी भारत में सो बोट कैप्साइजिंग टेक्स प्लेस ड्यू टू ओवरलोडिंग ऑफ बोट सो बोट कैप्साइजिंग इज अ डिजास्टर देन स्टैम्पिड इज अ डिजास्टर स्टैम्पिड इज नथिंग बट अ सडन रश ऑफ मॉब द उज्जैन ट्रेजडी टूक प्लेस इन मध्य प्रदेश विच वॉज अ बिग स्टैम्पिड it took place in the mahakal mandir because the lane to the main mandir is very narrow and a number of people waited 20000 people waited for the um, uh, gate of the mandir to be open temple to be opened and this resulted in a disaster so ujjain stampid is very famous we'll discuss stampid a bit of stampid also so that if suppose these questions are repeated anyhow allahabad stampid is also very famous which occurred on the occasion of mahakumbh mela so that also needs to be covered up then oil spill oil spill then also we can see building collapse and the best example of building collapse is mumbai because every year building collapses heavy rainfall takes place so mumbai is witness to definitely a number of disaster one is urban flood अनमैंड मीन्स क्या अनमैंड का मतलब है कि जो रेलवे के फाटक रहते हैं जहाँ पर कोई मैन नहीं उसे मॉनिटर नहीं कर रहा हो तो क्या होता है कि गाड़ियाँ वहाँ से गुजर जाती हैं और रेल जो आता है रेलवे तो इंजन उससे टकरा जाता है रेल गाड़ियाँ उससे टकरा जाती हैं तो उससे दुर्घटना घट जाती है तो अनमैंड क्रॉसिंग को मैंड वहाँ पर होना चाहिए मॉनिटर अच्छी तरह से किया जाना चाहिए ये एक बहुत बड़ी आ, समस्या है रेलवे के लिए आज बिल्डिंग कोलैप्स इज अ डिजास्टर देन आई टोल्ड यू ऑल्सो दैट देर टू मेन डिजास्टर टू विच मुंबई इज प्रोन टू वन इज बिल्डिंग कोलैप्स एंड सेकेंड इज अर्बन फ्लड्स हैवी रेनफॉल टेक्स प्लेस इन मुंबई देन ऑल्सो वी कैन सी दैट अनदर डिजास्टर in this category is what under this disaster in this category is electrical disaster for example in delhi electrical disaster took place the upahar uh, tragedy took place stampede meaning means stampede ka matlab kya hota hai stampede hindi mein kahenge bhagdad ko to bhagdad mein kya there is a sudden rush of mob 
क्राउड एक गैदर है मॉब गैदर है और अचानक से वो अगर सडन रश होता है उनका तो भगदड़ कई कारणों से कर सकती है एक हो सकता है र्यूमर फैलने से राइट होने से भी हो सकता है वो फेस्टिव ओकेजन के कारण भी हो सकता है वो तो कई उसके कारण हो सकते हैं भगदड़ के मैंने आपको बताया कि भगदड़ के कई कारण हो सकते हैं भगदड़ को ही स्टैम्पिड इंग्लिश में कहते हैं ठीक है स्टैम्पिड करते हैं तो उसके बारे में हम लोग डिटेल में चर्चा करेंगे कि भगदड़ क्या है क्यों घटित होता है क्या क्या कारण है उसके दो तीन उदाहरण उसके दिए जाएंगे विल डिस्कस इट विथ टू एग्जाम्पल्स विच वॉज अर्लियर इंक्लूडेड नियर सिलेबस वन वॉज उज्जैन ट्रेजिडी उज्जैन स्टैम्पिड एंड सेकेंड वॉज अलाहाबाद स्टैम्पिड विल डिस्कस दैट but basically it is what basically it is nothing but a sudden rush of mob ki jo bheed mein afra tafri machti hai aur kai karanon se ye mach sakti hai uske karan ho sakte hain dange bhi ho sakte hain afwah ka phailna bhi ho sakta hai agar maan lijiye rahat karya ki aapne khadya samagri ka vitaran kiya uske karan bhi bhagdad mach sakti hai to kai karan ho sakte hain bhagdad machne ke ek karan isme nahi wahi par aapko janna hai ki mob kise kahenge crowd kisko kehte hain aur क्यों मस्ती है भगदड़ क्लियर सी डैम बस्टिंग इज कंसिडर्ड इन द सेकेंड कैटेगरी एज ए जियोलॉजिकली रिलेटेड डिजास्टर वाई बिकॉज इट वुड बी इन गल्फिंग अ लार्ज जोग्राफिकल एरिया एंड डैम बस्टिंग ऑल्सो वेन रिजर्वायर्स आर मेड वेन सपोज वेन यू आर टॉकिंग अबाउट डैम्स इट सपोज वी आर टॉकिंग अबाउट अ रिजर्वायर it also triggers seismic activities because of the volume of water the weight of the water it can trigger seismic activity that's why we have considered it in what the geologically related disaster is that clear fine now let's move forward let's move forward and discuss other disaster <coughs> so building collapse is a disaster electrical disaster is there and then we can see also that down serial bomb blast in that category only serial bomb blast bomb blast is another disaster then also forest fires and urban fires urban fire forest fire so all these are we'll discuss in detail forest fire so all these are what all these are nothing but accident related disasters fine then the last category that you have to know is what the last category is fifth category and that is biologically related disaster related disasters which includes epidemics it also includes cattle epidemic epidemic and also includes what it also includes food poisoning so when we discuss epidemics we'll discuss some of the disease which are in news nowadays for example corona virus sars mars ebola then nipa etcetera etcetera suppose if a question is asked like that so we'll discuss all these thing along with other things fine clear so today let's move forward and start with one disaster as such today let's start with that disaster and the disaster that we are going to pick up first of all is what we are going to pick up first of all earthquakes let's pick up earthquakes and discuss why earthquakes takes place how earthquakes takes place and what are the four seismic zones in india etc so let's start with earthquakes and discuss in detail earthquakes see there can be question on earthquake and they can ask you mainly in disaster management what they ask you is mitigation measures that how the impact can be mitigated so a question can be asked to you in a general way in a generic way about the mitigation techniques of earthquake clear or they can ask you earthquake management directly 
but sometimes they can ask you that how earthquake resistant buildings are developed or established so that would be a specific question or suppose they ask you although earthquakes cannot be forecasted what can be done for this purpose so then you have to know that why vulnerability of india for earthquakes clear nasi when you are talking about earthquakes there are four seismic zone in india zone 1 2 3 and 4 and we can see sorry zone 2 3 4 and 5 zone 1 is not in india 2 3 4 and 5 of which we can see that zone 5 is the most vulnerable zone zone 5 is the most vulnerable zone and includes what it includes jammu and kashmir it includes himachal pradesh uttarakhand northern part of bihar the northeast region would be included andaman and nicobar island would be included in that andaman and nicobar island would be included in that only and we can see the bhuj area of gujarat would be included in that where there is confluence of three plates the main reason behind earthquakes in india is what the subduction of indian plate suppose this indian plate is there so subduction of indian plate under the eurasian plate so this is the eurasian plate and everybody you all know that himalayas was created due to the collision of the indian plate with the eurasian plate and himalayas are nothing but folded mountains which have been created clear fold and mountains which have been developed so it is the subduction of the indian plate under the eurasian plate which is responsible for earthquakes but what you have to know here is that subduction of the indian plate is taking under the eurasian plate which is the main reason of earthquakes or in other words we can also see that that himalayas are the newest mountain range of the world and since they are the newest mountain range of the world they are still in the process of its formation so if they are, they are in its process of its formation it means that the margin of himalaya is being redefined and that is the reason behind earthquakes in india clear fine in another way also you can put the explanation let's see how in another way you can put the explanation you can put the explanation that when you talk about the earthquakes in general the earth inside is in a molten state and in this molten state there are large boulders which are rubbing against each other colliding with each other or getting separated from each other so when they collide with each other when they get separated from each other this takes place in the form of seismic activities and due to seismic activities what will happen is earthquakes would be taking place clear so this is another way of putting but when you talk about vulnerability remember one more thing that in india bhuj area is a high risk zone why because in bhuj area of gujarat bhuj earthquake occurred the year 2001 in bhuj area of gujarat you can see there is confluence of three plates the indian plate the eurasian plate and also the third plate is what the arabian plate so three confluence confluence of three plate is there in bhuj area of gujarat and this is also enhancing the vulnerability of bhuj area clear first of all the second thing that you have to know is that vulnerability for earthquakes can enhance due to many important reason now vulnerability for earthquakes enhances how vulnerability for earthquakes enhances if suppose you are constructing dams and reservoirs in that area because dams and reservoirs can trigger seismic activities i have discussed earlier then vulnerability can enhance also if they are unsafe structures vulnerability can also enhance if suppose you are responsible for withdrawing excess amount of underground water for irrigation purpose why because underground water acts as an absorber of seismic waves so vulnerability can enhance due to all these kind of considerations is that clear fine so first of all you have to know that why vulnerability in india enhances and what are the reasons behind vulnerability to enhance so that's about first of all first part of earthquake that you have to know the second is that in india also we can see that vulnerability has enhanced why because of the unsafe structures or the unsafe buildings that we have created why how 
because a report suggests that more than 80 percent of structures in metropolitan cities of India do not abide by the by the national building which definitely is a set of a regulation according to which buildings should be established but they are not abiding by it and this is responsible for enhancing the vulnerability for earthquakes is that clear so first how earthquakes occur second thing is in india how earthquakes occur second thing is that how vulnerability of earthquakes in india enhances first note down all these things and then we come to that how the damage in earthquake takes place then forecasting then resistant earthquake resistant building etc fine i don't there are four seismic zones in india two three four five there are four seismic zones in india two three four five and zone 5 is considered as the most vulnerable zone and zone 5 is considered as the most vulnerable zone considered as the most vulnerable zone which includes which includes Jammu and Kashmir which includes Jammu and Kashmir, Himachal Pradesh, Uttarakhand, Jammu and Kashmir, Himachal Pradesh, Uttarakhand, North Bihar, Uttarakhand, North Bihar, then North East region, North East region, Andaman and Nicobar Island, Andaman and Nicobar Island, Bhuj area of Gujarat, Bhuj area of Gujarat. See the classification is that we do not have any kind of zone 1 because there is no very low intensity earthquake in India where there is either there is moderate intensity or high intensity type. Earthquakes can occur in any part of India. Clear. That is why we do not have zone 1 where won't, there won't be any kind of risk Bhuj area of Gujarat. So this all these regions fall under zone 5. Clear? Right on. The main reason behind the main reason behind earthquakes in India. Akash Vyas, urban flooding comes under the first category itself. Urban fire comes under the fourth category, not urban floods. The main reason behind earthquakes in India is the subduction of the Indian plate. Is the subduction of the Indian plate. Subduction of Indian plate under the Eurasian plate under the Eurasian plate subduction of the Indian plate under the Eurasian plate clear so that's the main reason but then you can put it in other words or in other words we can see that the margin of Himalayas is being redefined as Himalayas is the newest mountain range in the world still in the process of its formation right on or in other words we can say or in other words we can say other words we can say that the margin of Himalayas is being redefined or in other words we can say that the margin of Himalayas, Himalayas is being redefined, is being redefined, margin of Himalayas is being redefined as Himalayas are the newest mountain range of the world, as Himalayas are the newest mountain range of the world, newest mountain range of the world, 
which is still in the process of its formation which is still in the process of its formation process of its formation is that clear fine now just put another explanation to earthquakes and what is that that the earth inside is in a molten stage state you can say where large boulders collide with each other or get separated with from each other when they do so means when they collide or get separated the release of energy is in the form of seismic energy which is responsible for earthquakes right on the earth inside is in a molten stage the earth inside is in a molten state molten state the earth inside is in a molten state where large boulders where large boulders either collide either collide or get separated from each other either collide or get separated from each other separated from each other which is responsible for release of energy which is responsible for release of energy release of energy that is in the form of seismic that is in the form of seismic energy that is in the form of seismic energy seismic energy clear so that's the reason on the other hand we can see that vulnerability for earthquakes can enhance due to many reason right on vulnerability for earthquakes can enhance due to many reason vulnerability for earthquakes can enhance due to many reasons many reasons which includes excessive withdrawal of excessive withdrawal of underground water excessive withdrawal of underground water underground water which acts as absorber for seismic waves because this water is acting as absorber for seismic waves which acts as absorber for seismic waves absorber for seismic waves so that's one reason the second reason is what that when you construct dams and reservoirs the reservoirs can trigger seismic activities clear construction of dams and further what can happen suppose if earthquakes occur then the dams can burst which can lead in flash floods right on second construction of dams and reservoirs construction of dams and reservoirs reservoirs construction of dams and reservoirs unsafe structures unsafe structures unsafe structures etc and here you'll quote you'll cite one report and the report is what that about 80% more than 80% of structures in metropolitan cities of india do not abide by the national building code right on about 80% of structures about 80% of structures in metropolitan cities of india in metropolitan cities of india about 80% of structures in metropolitan cities of india do not abide by do not abide by the national building code the national building code national building code is nothing but a set of guidelines 
according to which the structure should be constructed. So, they are not abiding by the national building code. Is that clear? So, that is responsible for enhancing the vulnerability, the condition of structures, then construction of dams and reservoirs, then also we can see other factors. So, all these are responsible for enhancing vulnerability. See, when you talk about When you talk about uh, earthquakes, when, uh, whenever earthquakes occur, there are two types of waves. One is called as the vertical waves and second would be called as the horizontal waves. Suppose if you are talking about the vertical waves, suppose this is a structure, this is a building obviously. So this building due to its weight and due to rotation of the earth would be having a frequency of its own of its own so when you are talking about the vertical waves which occur so vertical waves are can be neutralized by the frequency of buildings but when you talk about the horizontal waves what will happen the horizontal waves would be considered as more damaging for the building so we can see that among the seismic waves first thing is that the horizontal waves would be more damaging and if suppose the frequency of the seismic waves matches with the frequency of the building then what will happen is resonance effect would be developed and the damage would be severe in your school days you have studied about resonance effect you took a tuning fork and strike that tuning fork in sound chapter you studied that so, what is happening is that if the frequency of seismic wave matches with the frequency of the building, then resonance effect would be developed and this would be more damaging. So, what we can write is that among the seismic waves, the horizontal waves are more damaging and if the frequency of building matches with the frequency of seismic waves, then the damage would be more severe as a resonance effect would be generated right on among the seismic waves among the seismic waves seismic waves horizontal waves would be more damaging horizontal waves would be more damaging among the seismic waves horizontal waves would be more damaging and if and if the frequency of building and if the frequency of building matches with the frequency of matches with the frequency of seismic waves if the frequency of building matches with the frequency of seismic wave then resonance effect would be developed then resonance effect would be developed resonance effect would be developed sorry just one second resonance effect would be developed and the damage would be more severe and the damage would be more severe clear fine so this first of all you have to know for what you have to do now first of all you have to develop a mismatch between the frequency of seismic waves and that of the building now see the nepal earthquake occurred and nepal earthquake was devastating in nature why because there was a fault line created the fault line was created through centuries but this fault line straight away came to the city of Kathmandu and the vulnerability of city of Kathmandu was more why because city of Kathmandu is nothing but established on a primitive lake basin and that's why the vulnerability was more so the water was withdrawn so the it was established on a primitive lake basin and because of which the vulnerability was more clear first thing the second fact is there is a temple in Kathmandu that temple is called as Pasupati Nath temple if you have visited there you can see that temple and uh, 
the structures, number of structures in Kathmandu, old structures in Kathmandu got damaged. But there was no damage done to Pasupati Nath temple. It was not the blessing of God as such. But the structure was responsible. And how the structure was responsible for this? The structure was responsible how? Because this building has been developed where you can see wooden structures have been used in joints. And the wooden structure, suppose we are using wooden structure in joints. So they haven't nailed them. If you nail them, they behave as a single integrated unit. So what they have done is that instead that they have done what is that they have grooved them. So when the earthquakes occur, they would be rubbing against each other, but won't be getting damaged. Clear? So first thing is that as far as earthquake resistant building is concerned, what you have to do is the first precautionary measure which has to be taken is what? That earthquake resistant building would be created in a manner that there should be a mismatch between the frequency of seismic waves and that of the building so that no resonance effect would be generated. Is that clear? Fine. So that no resonance effect would be generated. And on the other hand, as far as this we can write for earthquake resistant building first of all and we will discuss further how earthquake resistant building can be created. But as far as the forecasting of earthquake is concerned, the earthquakes cannot be forecasted, everybody knows. And no writing about the movement of ants or the movement of buffaloes or cattle etc. in that based on Chinese studies. Because everything made in China is dubious nowadays, clear, even the thought, even the testing etc. But what you have to consider is that you know very well that the earthquakes cannot be forecasted on time. But in three countries, what they have done is that they have developed an alert system. So they have developed a alert system. And how this alert system works? Now in US, in Taiwan, in Japan, they have developed an alert system. And how this earth alert system works? See, when you talk about seismic activities which is taking place inside the earth. So here, where the seismic activities occur, the waves which are generated is called as P waves or the primary waves you would have studied in geography. But the damage is due to the S waves, which is called as the surface waves. If we see, there is a time interval of 11 to 15 minutes between the S waves and the P waves. Clear? The damage is going to be done by the S waves, that is the surface waves. So, we can see there is a time difference of 11 to 15 minutes between the S waves and the P waves. If at all, through any device, we can register the time at which P waves have occurred. We can register the time at which P waves have occurred. We know that after 11 to 15 minutes, the S waves would be occurring, the surface waves would be occurring, which would be likely for the damage. So we can, if at all we know this time, we can send signals to people staying in that area so that evacuation can be made. What these countries have done is that in, in the high risk zone, they have established a dense network of small observatories many small small observatories in the high risk zone in the high vulnerable area they have established a dense network of small observatories and with the help of this they register the time when p waves occur and they send the signal to far flung areas they send this message to far flung areas so that evacuation can be easily made so this is an alert system which is working and through this lives can be saved. You cannot save your property, but obviously you can save your life. Clear? Fine? So first of all, although earthquake cannot be forecasted on time, but an alert system can be established for this purpose. Right on. Mitigation measures include, mitigation measure includes, and in that we will deal first of all with forecasting. Mitigation measures include first, right on the first point, 
although earthquakes cannot be forecasted although earthquakes cannot be forecasted but an alert system can be developed for this purpose although earthquakes cannot be forecasted but an alert system can be developed for this purpose developed for this purpose which is successfully working in countries like which is successfully working in countries like us taiwan and japan countries like us taiwan and japan and what they have done now they have established a dense network of small observatories in high risk area and this measures the time when p waves or primary waves occur right down these countries have established these countries have established a dense network of small observatories a dense network of small observatories a dense network of small observatories in high risk areas in high risk areas dense network of small observatories in high risk areas which registers which registers the time when primary waves occur time when primary waves occur and this message and this message is communicated to far flung areas is communicated to far flung areas now far flung area does not mean 1000 km away because the impact of earthquake won't be there but far flung area means 250 km 300 km message is communicated to far flung areas for the purpose of evacuation for the purpose of evacuation and what is the theme behind that the logic behind them so right uh, remember that there's always a time difference of 11 to 15 minutes between the primary waves and the surface waves right on there's always a time difference between there's always a time difference between time difference between 11 to 15 minutes there's always a time difference between 11 to 15 minutes 11 to 15 minutes between primary and surface waves between primary and the surface waves primary and the surface waves is that clear fine so this also you have to know but see what can be further suppose if exclusive question is asked on forecasting that what can be done for this purpose one uh thing which can be written here is and there's a possibility that it can be used in future we can develop a device using neutrinos when we talk about neutrinos we uh, just remember that neutrinos are the second most abundant particle in universe it's the second most abundant particle in universe the first most abundant particles in universe is what it is photon the light particles so neutrino is the second most abundant particle in universe we are sitting here 100 trillion neutrino is passing our body every second but we are not aware of that clear so we can see that neutrinos are second most abundant particle in universe and there's a type of neutrino which is called as geo neutrino geo neutrino comes out of the earth surface why should 15 minutes be required to communicate for that purpose you can communicate within seconds to any place as such 
if suppose we are talking about 11 to 15 minutes sirens can run within seconds why should we require 15 minutes to we should not require 15 minutes if suppose siren is blown if we know that this is an earthquake prone area sirens would be blown and the setup would be like this that that if suppose we get a message that an earthquake is due to happen between 11 to 15 minutes siren will be blown at least you can even come from your floor number 20th through lift downstairs and save your life so this is not for the purpose of saving your property this is only for the purpose of saving life at least the vulnerability would be reduced telling to people does not is not required because a siren would be blown for that and the setup would be like this that if suppose the siren runs it means that the earthquake is due to happen it's not that we are going to verbally tell the people is that clear gargi fine now next thing that you have to know is that there is a type of neutrino which is called as geoneutrinos and geoneutrinos comes out from the earth surface so it comes from the earth surface and there is a characteristic of the geoneutrinos the feature of the geoneutrinos that it changes its characteristic whenever it comes out of the earth surface in accordance with any kind of geological upheaval which would be taking place inside the earth so geoneutrinos kya hote hain surface se bahar nikal rahe to agar maan lijiye ki bhugarbhik koi bhi kriyaen ho rahi hain geological koi bhi activity ho raha hai earth ke andar to geoneutrinos apne characteristic ko badalte hain to ye signal kya batayega ye signal batayega ki earthquake ho sakta hai ya nahi to we can develop a forecasting device with the help of geoneutrinos in future with the help of geoneutrinos in future so that the earthquakes can be forecasted why because geoneutrinos are neutrinos a type of neutrinos which comes out of the earth surface and changes its characteristic and changes its characteristic in accordance with the geological upheaval which would be taking place inside the earth we will discuss earthquake resistant buildings just now surveys fine we are discussing first measure and that is forecasting and then we will discuss earthquake resistant building just now we will coming coming to that right on in future just continue with the forecasting point in future geoneutrinos can be used in future geoneutrinos can be used to develop a forecasting device for earthquake geoneutrinos can be used to develop a forecasting device for earthquakes forecasting device for earthquakes is that clear fine and why because geoneutrinos are a type of neutrinos which comes out of the earth surface right on geoneutrinos geoneutrinos are a type of neutrinos are a type of neutrinos which comes out of the earth surface which comes out of the earth's surface earth surface and changes its characteristic and changes its characteristic characteristic in accordance with and changes its characteristic in accordance with the geological upheaval in accordance with the geological upheaval bhugarbhi garbaniya geological upheaval taking place inside the earth taking place inside the earth inside the earth is that clear so that's your first point that you have to write now coming to surveys your point earthquake resistant building how can earthquake resistant building be constructed now there are three points that you have to remember here 
first point is what first point that you have to remember is that first of all first precautionary measure is that you have to develop a mismatch between the frequency of seismic waves and the frequency of buildings so that the re resonance effect can be denied clear and the dimension of damage would be low and this can be done by using wooden structure in joints which should not be nailed but instead should be grooved and the best example which can be cited is the Pasupatinath temple. On the other hand we can say that that as far as earthquake resistant building is concerned earthquake resistant building can be developed using two techniques one is called as base isolation method and second is called as use of vibration dampers as far as base isolation method is concerned you have to know that how the base isolation method would be working suppose this is the building and this is on lying on the surface the impact of the earthquake is what why because this is attached to the surface if we are responsible for isolating it from the surface if we are responsible for isolating it from the surface then what will happen is that the impact of the seismic waves won't be on the building so how can we do that we can do this by using large cylinders we can you do this by using ball bearings not small large ball bearings springs and this would be nothing but base isolation method clear yes obviously we are talking about a possibility in the future ayush that we can develop a forecasting device in future with the help of geo neutrinos like particle because the characteristic you have studied that it changes its character see neutrinos are the second most abundant particle in universe and uh, such is the abundance that the if suppose we establish even a neutrino observatory on the surface the observation would be hampered due to presence of neutrinos in large numbers so what we are doing is that always the neutrino observatory is established underground in Thani district also we have a neutrino observatories in India we are developing a neutrino observatory also when we talk about the ice cube that is also neutrino observatory so the neutrino observatory has to be established underground and here we have discussed a type of neutrino which is called as geo neutrinos which comes out of the earth surface so there are many types of neutrinos tau neutrinos and this is one neutrino which comes out of the earth surface and it changes its characteristic in accordance with the geological upheaval which is taking place inside the earth which is nothing but reflective of what it is nothing but reflective of the seismic activities which can occur so we can develop a device using geo neutrinos in future that we have talked about is that clear and the second method is what see in japan what they did was an high risk area in japan they constructed houses small small houses in a high risk area and what they did was they put this house on a deflated balloon deflated balloon clear and uh, as far as this deflated balloon is concerned this deflated balloon is attached to a compressor and then it is attached to a sensor so suppose this is sensor this is compressor and this is nothing but deflated balloon jo fula hua balloon nahi ho this sensor is responsible for sensing seismic activities when it senses seismic activities it sends the message to the compressor and the compressor is responsible for filling this balloon with air so when the balloon is filled with air what will happen the house would float on the balloon but won't get damaged so this is nothing but the example of what base isolation technique base isolation method clear so this is base isolation method first method of developing earthquake resistant building and the second method is what use of vibration dampers use of vibration dampers it means that near the base of the building we can put viscous liquid or carbon fibers now these viscous liquid or carbon fibers would be acting as what 
would be acting as vibration dampers because they would be responsible for absorbing the seismic waves clear so earthquake resistant building can be developed or established with the help of two techniques one is called as the base isolation method and second is called as use of vibration dampers this you have to know is that clear we are talking about buildings right on second point we have discussed the first point exclusively related to forecasting second point exclusively related to earthquake resistant buildings right on as far as earthquake resistant building is concerned as far as earthquake resistant building is concerned concerned the first precautionary measure the first precautionary measure is to develop is to develop a mismatch between the first precautionary measure is to develop a mismatch between mismatch between frequency of seismic waves frequency of seismic waves and that of the building and that of the building first of all to develop a mismatch between frequency of seismic waves and that of the building to defy to defy resonance effect to defy resonance effect dissonance effect so that the damage would be less so that the damage would be less and how can it be done it can be done by using wooden structures in joint which should be not nailed but should be grooved we can use also reinforced steel for this purpose right on we can develop we can develop this by using we can develop this by using wooden structures in joint wooden structures in joints which should not be nailed wooden structures in joint which should not be nailed but instead should be grooved but instead should be grooved grooved so that but instead should be grooved so that it does not behave as a single integrated unit so that it does not behave as a single integrated unit single integrated unit clear fine so this is how we would be defining or denying the impact of resonance effect we won't allow resonance effect to take place which is nothing but happening due to frequency amplification and matching of frequencies clear first thing the second thing you have to know is that earthquake resistant buildings can be developed using two main techniques right on earthquake resistant buildings earthquake resistant buildings can be developed using two techniques earthquake resistant building can be developed <coughs> using two techniques first base isolation method base isolation method and second use of vibration dampers base isolation method and second Use of groove मतलब होता है खांचा बनाते हैं एक दूसरे के ऊपर डाल देंगे इस तरह से लेकिन उसे नेल नहीं करेंगे अगर नेल करेंगे तो सिंगल इंटीग्रेटेड तो उसकी ब्रिटिलिटी ज्यादा हो जाएगी टूटने के आसार अधिक हो जाएंगे क्लियर तो यहां पर अगर मान लीजिए खांचा बनाकर आप इसे डालते हैं तो अर्थक्विक अगर आएगा तो एक दूसरे के ऊपर यह घिसेगा लेकिन टूटेगा नहीं 
is that clear fine use of vibration base adjustment method and second is use of vibration dampers in the former technique pehle wale mein in the former technique former technique the building would be separated from the surface the building would be separated from the surface using using large cylinders building would be se separated from the surface using large cylinders <coughs> ball bearings large cylinders ball bearings springs springs and in the later technique that is use of vibration dampers and in the later technique we would be using viscous liquid we would be using carbon fiber we would be using carbon carbon fibers or viscous liquid carbon fiber or viscous liquid viscous liquid near the base of the building carbon fiber or viscous liquid near the base of the building near the base of the building which would be responsible for absorbing the seismic waves which would be responsible for absorbing the seismic waves responsible for absorbing the seismic waves is that clear so this also you have to know so this is about earthquake resistant building but one thing which can be added here is see there is a material which is called as meta material we will write it tomorrow let us discuss today there is a material which is called as meta material and meta material has been developed in US using three things wire foam and photonic crystals <coughs> and this material is based on zero reflection and zero refraction see any material suppose this is a pen which is visible to me why because the light rays is striking it in getting reflected and coming to my eyes clear so it is getting reflected and coming to my eyes but when you are talking about any material which is based on zero reflection suppose if the light rays would have ref been refracted through it also it would have been visible to us clear refracted through it also it would have been visible to us but in this case what is happening is dekhi carbon fibers wo hote hain na jo carbon ke ray se hote hain na use kehte hain carbon fibers carbon ke kai categories hain एमॉर्फस होता है क्रिस्टलाइन होता है तो उसमें एक कैटेगरी होते हैं जो रेसे वाले फाइबर कार्बन फाइबर होते हैं तो वो क्रिस्टलाइन ने एमॉर्फस रूप में होता है तो वो उसको बिल्डिंग के नीचे डाल देंगे ताकि वो सिस्मिक वेव्स को अब्जॉर्ब कर सके अच्छा आगे देखिए सपोज इफ दिस इज अ पेन दिस इज विजिबल टू अस बिकॉज द लाइट रेज इज गेटिंग रिफ्लेक्टेड हैड इट बीन ऑल्सो रिफ्लेक्टेड थ्रू दिस इट वुड हैव बीन विजिबल टू अस बट इफ सपोज light rays falls on it it neither gets reflected nor passes through it it simply goes over it bends and passes over it it's not passing through the pen it's bending and passing over it this won't be visible to us this material won't be visible to us so this is called as meta material and meta material so invisibility is nothing new now because invisibility is possible in science today through the use of nanotechnology and one such material which has been developed using nanotechnology is meta material which is based on zero reflection and zero refraction and we can see that one of the qualities of meta material is what one of the qualities feature of meta material is that meta materials can alter the sound waves meta materials can alter the seismic waves so in future we can develop a earthquake resistant building using meta material which has the ability to alter the seismic waves right down in future in future future 
we can develop in future we can develop earthquake resistant buildings with the help of earthquake resistant buildings with the help of meta materials meta materials which has the ability to alter which has the ability to alter alter not only sound waves alter not only sound waves but also seismic waves not only sound waves but also seismic waves but also right on meta material has been developed in us thodi si jiske bare mein jankari aapko de do meta material has been developed in us by using wire foam and फोटोनिक क्रिस्टल तीन चीज याद रखेंगे इसमें वायर फोम एंड फोटोनिक क्रिस्टल एंड इज बेस्ड ऑन एंड इज बेस्ड ऑन जीरो रिफ्लेक्शन जीरो रिफ्लेक्शन एंड जीरो रिफ्रैक्शन एंड इज बेस्ड ऑन जीरो रिफ्लेक्शन एंड zero refraction is that clear so in future we can develop earthquake resistant must to write in earthquake resistant building clear so when you disc write about earthquakes you can write that what is the reason behind earthquakes in india second how the vulnerability is enhanced third you can talk about that what are the factors responsible for enhancing a vulnerability then you can discuss the how earthquakes can all do cannot be forecasted but an alert system can be developed for this purpose how in future we would be using geo neutrinos for developing forecasting device and also the earthquake resistant building today till today only this much tomorrow when we meet we would be further moving ahead discussing all other disaster and tomorrow we'll discuss a slight something about the bhuj earthquake also to end up this topic and then we'll come to floods then to troughs etc clear thank you very much